Right guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with Josh. Hello. You've finally seen his face. Uh, and this is what we're going over today. A couple of people have asked about Blood Angel lists. And uh, Blood Angel's been one of the first times I did. Me and Josh are here to go through the best things about this. And basically how to build a list. And Josh plays Marines differently to what I play Blood Angels. So there's a few disagreements. A but few. <laughs> like I said, um, well, I said before that we were going to do the list analysis. Josh's opinions are very different to mine which is why I like this building with them. So we've pretty much agreed on a, a very si very same old, same old core um, and then basically built a couple of different methods of play around the core. Um, so what we've got uh, is we're going to do 1850 list um, and then what we would add to each list to make it the 2000 points. So the first list, uh, what we're going to do is um, your troops choices. We both agreed that, well, <laughs> I'm more, I more agree that uh, a 10 man tactical squad with a heavy flamer and a melted gun in a drop pod is the way to go. And I'll, I would take two of them. Josh, however. See, not being a Blood Angel player, I don't build around assault. The way I would do it is have a 10 man squad with a last cannon and a plasma gun, buy a Razorback, combat squad with a last cannon backfield, send the plasma gun upfield in the tank. Whereas I would rather drop my drop pod in the enemy's deployment zone, flame them and pop a, melt, pop a melter at a tank. Plus then you've got three units straight away in your enemy's deployment zone that they're going to have to deal with. Um, basically I'm going to double that up um, and obviously combat squad them as they get out of the drop pod. Um, which means if you, you know, if you get a direct hit on, on, on an objective, you've got three units there, you've got heavy flamer threatening, you know, anything with the four armor is going to be, you know, it, it's going to do damage, isn't it? You've then got the melt gun to target the tank as well. Yeah, that makes sense. So basically, double up on those. Fast attack. Blood Angels have access to melt guns in assault squads. We don't. No. When I, when I did play the Space Marine list, I think it was when the Quartz first came out, I mean, you had a game oh, of Space Marines know. versus Marines. Uh, and I was trying to build the assault squad, I was like, Where, where's my melt gun? Where, where's my plasma guns? You don't have any. I don't want What? No. So basically, melt guns are your friend. Take two five-man assault squads without jump packs, with drop pods, because they are free, and two melt guns in each. So that's four melt shots in drop pods for 210 points. You're gonna drop down, you're gonna blow a tank up unless you roll really badly. Which happens more often than not. <laughs> In my experience, it, sometimes you, I, when I played Michael's Orcs and the lifter grabber, I dropped both assault marines in front of it and it survived for like three turns. <laughs> so yeah, um, so that's uh, 210 points for that. It was 195 each for the tactical marines. And then Josh kind of agrees with me on this. Take a ball strike force. I would always say ball strike force unless you're going for an objectives only game. I mean, you get so much from a ball strike force, it doesn't make sense not to really. You lose the objective secured, but you get plus one initiative on the charge. And coupled with furious charge, it means you're probably going to outkill marines before they can even swing. Exactly. So not all, yeah, you're hitting marines on fours, you're wounding them on threes, and you're swinging before them. If you happen to have a power sword in there, wow. So, that's great. I haven't put any power swords on anybody because I find that the assault marines are gonna get targeted, they're gonna die. Use them to have your enemy's mobility instantly. Yeah, it does make sense to have cheap expendable squads if you're gonna build them cheap expendable. And then speed bump with them. Your opponent is gonna target them and not other, other stuff. So for the elite choice that you have to take, um, I've gone for a Furioso Dreadnought with a frag cannon and heavy flamer. Bay of my life, that <laughs> That's three templates with Ignore's cover. Two at strength 6 rending and one at strength 5 AP4. Why would you not? How many times have I made mince meat Dark Reapers with that? You're looking at me, I'm not an Eldar player. <laughs> I don't know, how many times have you made mince meat with A few, a fair few. Um, if you're playing Orcs, looters, basically bye bye looters. Um, anything with a fort armor is toast. Well, mm, even, even, as even, a Necron player, four of armor save is never toast. <laughs> no, but... Go ahead, deny one of my four saves. Mm. 
it, it, even something with three up armor, like if you're going after Dark Reapers or other Marines, that you're still going to be wounding enough. Well, yeah, it's, to force it's casualties. good at forcing saves. Strength five, strength six. They're decent strength weapons. Yep, and if he happens to survive the first turn, um, basically he's then going to charge a vehicle or, or a monster, and you know he's got what is it? Two. I don't know. I can't remember whether he's got three or two attacks because... Well, the ones I run charge with five, but I know that... Yes, yes, yes. We've got, that we've got more attacks than you. Uh, so we would only have three attacks on the charge because we've only got two base. Um, but even that, strength ten, you know, flame some infantry the first turn and then go straight after a tank when you, when you get the opportunity to charge. So, heavy support. Uh, Josh swears by Storm Ravens. Personally, I like the Fire Raptor. Well, I don't um, mind the Fire Raptor, I just don't have one. Not everybody has one, so that's why we've said a Storm Raven. And we are in agreement with the weapons that it's kitted with in an Assault Cannon and Multi Melter. Yes. Why not? Is arise again because I also swear by Hurricane Boulders. He does. Which Josh this guy hates loves for whatever reason. <laughs> I, don't, I don't hate them, it's just I don't tend to upgrade stuff as much as you. Agreed, but I thought I'll buy them once and they made complete mincemeat of an entire Farsight squadron. Raven came in, suits disappeared. I don't see a problem with that. No, there's no problem at all. They do dish out a lot of fine power indeed. But at 1850, the way that we built this list, we didn't have the points to put them in. We could have done. <laughs> if you didn't stick to your... But, the, so basically, that is the majority of the core. The only other core that we both agreed on yeah. is a Baal Predator. Yeah, Baal Preds are ridiculous. Dozer Blade, Storm Bolter. Stormbolt that keeps one of your other weapons alive if it happens to explode. Plus, they're fast. If you move six inches, you can still shoot all four weapons. The fancy point is because it's fast, move 12, Flamestorm Cannon. Exactly. Have a problem with jet bikes? <laughs> well, no, you don't. Um, a lot of people do forget that Blood Angels are fast tanks. Um, so, obviously, if, you, if you've got a Battle Predator there, they tend to keep out of range of it. Forgetting that you can move 12 and still shoot two templates. Um, so yeah, either way they're the same points no matter which way you run them. So obviously kit your Battle Predator you know, against whoever you're going to be playing against. If you're going for Nids, um, Orcs, uh, even possibly Eldar Jet Bikes. Oh, Eldar Jet Bikes definitely, even though it's cover <laughs> AP3 Strength 6. Definitely, definitely. Uh -huh. Battle Predators are your best friend um, with the Flame Storm Cannons. If you want something with a little bit longer range, um, with good manoeuvrability, Dacapred, Heavy Ball, a Storm Ball, and an Assault Cannon. Dacapreds are good, but if you want long range support, I would go Vindicator. To be honest, I would go Vindicator before I went Dacapred. Because are... 12 inches, 24 inches Demolisher Cannon. I'm sorry, I'm scared saying it. <laughs> right? You've only got one, thankfully, but I would kill for fast Vindicators. The Bar Predator comes in at 145 points. A Vindicator is 120. Plus a seed shield is 10, plus an overcharged engine is 10, and the storm border, which, why would you why not, would you not, is 145 points. So you can change that heavy support one of three ways for the same point cost. And all of them, very situational, but all very, very good. So that is the major that is the core that we've kind of agreed for each of the lists. Uh, and what we've done on top of that, I think that comes to 1120. Uh, I think you said it was 1120, yeah. 1120 points. So from that, we're basically now going to go and expand into three different ways that you can play or build your army. Um, we're going to look to build up to 1850, but then want to expand it into 2000 as well. Right, so for 2000 points, me and Josh are in agreement with the 2000 point list, but bringing it back down to 1850, we've got both slightly different views, yeah. but we both agree that the 2000 that we've built is going to be quite uh, quite nice. So, um, for 2000 points, what we've done um, is we've added Mephiston uh, and a Mastery Level 2 Librarian, and Terminator Armor with a Storm Shield. Um, and they're going to go with uh, five Haminators. Yep, Haminators in a Crusader. With a multi melter. Multi melter optional, but multi melter. Yeah. Uh, and then we've gone for a Sanguinary Priest with. Uh, what was it? Melt Bombs and a Bolt Pistol. Uh, melt Bombs, Bolt Pistol. Just cheap and cheerful. Yeah. 
the librarian's there basically to give Mefferson his extra psychic dice. Um, Josh says you don't need them. I, th I kind of think you do because Mephiston can kill almost anything. I've killed four Wraith Knights with him. Basically, Sanguine Sword gets you to strength 10. You swing him before him anyway because you're charging, you're going to be initiative 6. Um, if you get Quickening off, you're going to be at least initiative 7 on the charge, potentially 9. Uh, he's got 4 attacks base, uh, plus see. 1 for 2 weapons, plus 1 for charge and makes 6. Possibly 9 if you get Quickening off. Um, and you want Force off to kill the um, Wraith Knights as well. Because the Force does D3 additional wounds due to instant death. So you're hitting, you're swinging before the Wraith Knights. Yep. Hitting on 3s. Yep. Wounding on 2s. Yep. For D3 wounds each with only a 5 up invul for the Wraith Knight to get through if it's a sword and board or some cannon and board. Yes. You're never going to run into a not board Wraith Knight though, are you? I did. You're not normal. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is the way that, that we would run it um, and basically go for those powers. Um, and you know, the other two that, that um, the librarian gets or that Mephiston would get. Um, in the Unleash day. Rage will be funny. Unleash Rage it would grant an extra attack as well, so Mephiston could potentially swing with 10. Um, attacks on the charge which is brutal. You've got two chances to get quick and off because of the li uh, Blood Angel Librarian um, and Mephiston as well obviously each being able to cast it on themselves. See the Blood Angel powers? I don't know what they do. You don't talk about them very much. No because I don't use them I use quickening basically. Um, so yeah that is the 2000 point list. To drop it back to 1850. Wings would be good. Wings is cool but you can't assault. Yeah, well, oh dear, my Land Raider died. <laughs> Fly. Yeah. Um, so to drop it to 1850, I would... Hang uh -huh. on. The 2000, the, two, the 2000 point list, you need to move the tactical marines to an allied detachment. Yeah, you just need to move five tactical marines across. Move five across. You've got 20, you can do it. So basically, you're paying for a HQ and an extra troop choice. Yes, they can't go in the drop pod. Oh, look at that Storm Raven just sitting there. Exactly. <laughs> so that, that that's basically 2000. To drop the 1850, I would drop the priest, put your five marines back in the drop pod, and then drop the librarian's Terminator armor and Storm Shield. Unfortunately, you've also got to drop to a Redeemer. Yeah, but. And Redeemer drop the Multi Melter. Not going to be that much of a problem, really. Um, so basically, you've still got all that psychic pool, but you don't have. The priest with the terminators because them hominators with feel no pain is going to be very difficult to shift. Iron can... Man's player, <laughs> he knows how difficult they are. To and shift. That, that's a six up feel no pain as well. Yep. Um, so yeah, basically in the two thousand point list, the, the uh, priest goes with them in the, in the land raider. Um, you need the crusader though because of space. Yeah, sixteen transport capacity is good unless you happen to have a Spartan lying around. <laughs> Um, so for 1850, like I said, I would drop the priest, drop to a redeemer, drop the multi melter, and drop the librarian back to a standard mastery level two. Uh, for Josh's, I would drop. I would drop the librarian altogether. Just drop them completely and take the priest. And take the priest. Yeah. Which get which drops you down far enough to again switch your land raider back, bring your marines back the, across, and the um, land raider back to the crusader. Yeah. 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 That that's it. Because now, fair enough, Mephiston's not as potent. You're instead just sitting on a unit of Thunderhammer Storm Shield Terminators that charge with plus one strength, plus one weapon skill, and feel no pain. And anything else Mephiston cares to roll. Yeah, so basically combining them in the 2000 point list, that, that unit a lot expensive, it's going to do damage. It's, yeah. it's going to do a lot of work, and it's going to be... Not easy to shift. I mean, Mephiston toughness five. He doesn't have an invun, so giving him the feel no pain is pretty vital unless you're going against something that's D or strength ten. Could get shield the Sanguinis. Walk charge one for a five of invun. It's not bad. If he happens to get it, or if I think does it target just the psycho, or is it his unit? I think it's just the psycho. It might be his unit. Almost in the unit. Which is handy. So obviously, your priest. Uh, is going to go 5 up in run if he's in there and Mephiston is as well. 
and a five will feel no pain for anything strength nine or less. Which so, is yeah. 90% of the guns in the game. Yeah. So that is the first list. Uh, we'll now basically take a step back and rebuild it using the same core list. Right, welcome back. This is another one of the 2000 point list, another way that we could run it. Uh, and it's got a little bit more of a Death Star with it in the form of uh, HQs we've still left the Sanguinary Priest in. Um, obviously, like I said previously, we are sticking with the same core here with the Tactical Marines, um, the Furioso, the Assault Squads, uh, the Storm Raven, and one of the fast tanks. Um, <clears throat> what we've done in this one, making up the 2000, we've added a second fast tank. So obviously the Bar Predator or the Vindicator, whichever way you want to go, uh, depending on who your opponent is. Um, we've then added uh, the Sanguinary Priest in again, but he is just stock, uh, but with a jump pack. We've then gone for a Mastery Level 1 Librarian with a jump pack. And the reason we've gone for that is because who doesn't love Dante with Quickening? Anyone who's played against him, I guess. <laughs> if you charge uh, with a bar strike force, you're going to be at initiative at 8 minimum. Because he's 6, plus 1 for charging, plus potentially 3 for quickening. Plus extra attacks, he's got 6 on the charge. It's strength 5, 7. Because seven. Seven. a furious charge, AP 2. Yeah. When you take Dante as well, he is a very, very good tank. He's got 2 up armor. He's got four in front and he's Eternal Warrior. And with the Priest in the squad with him, he's even got Feel No Pain as well. Plus he's Weapon Skill 7. Daft. I think he's, he's, weapon, he's Weapon Skill Daft. I think he's 6 base. Uh, I don't think there's anything he doesn't hit on 3s that isn't like, you know, a Greater Demon. Solitaire. <laughs> That's a Greater Demon, haven't you read Fluff? <laughs> yeah, he's Weapon Skill 6, so he'd be 7 in there with the Priest. Uh, and the squad that we would uh, put both of those with is a five-man squad of... Strength seven on the charge. Yep, strength seven plus two for his axe, and it's master crafted as well. Um, so that's fantastic. Um, basically, Dante also causes fear with his death mask of Sanguinius. Yeah, because that still matters. It doesn't against probably 50% of what you're playing. Um, it will be fun to charge a squad of guardsmen and have them all run away, mind. You're still, you're still hitting on threes regardless with yeah. Dante, no matter who you're charging, unless the, you know, the weapon skill seven or above. Um, but yeah, stick them with Sanguinary Guard. Um, obviously, everyone's got jump packs uh, in there. The Sanguinary Guard are basically jump infantry with two up armor and fearless, and come stock with a master crafted power weapon. Who doesn't love it? And, and then obviously they're going to be weapon skill five because of the priest. Uh, with feel no pain, so again, the survivable, the maneuverable, and they can punch like a ton of bricks. I would say I give three of them power swords. You're hitting on threes against most things, re rolling one of them because of Master Craft, so you need to remember to roll your dice for each of the attacks separately. Um, you're going to be wounding more stuff on threes as well because of Furious Charge, and you're going to be swinging before again because of the plus one initiative on the charge. Um, we've gone for two axes as well just to give that AP2 and that little bit extra strength uh, when you charge. I mean, strength 5, you found out yourself when you play against Turner's Furious Charge is invaluable. Against it's not bad, but as a Necron player by trade, all my combat units are strength 5 anyway. Yeah. I mean, I've never really thought it mattered. Yeah, but I mean, even against tanks, I, I've seen the time I, when I played Johnny's Town, I charged me Devastators at, at his Devilfish rather than shoot it. <laughs> well, it was either a case of him jinking me not charge, or me charge and only need fives to glance. So, yeah, Furious Charge is handy, and obviously if you've got the Power Axes in there as well, you're going to be swinging at, at Power Axes plus one strength? Plus one. So you're going to be swinging at strength six with your Axes at AP2 as well. Um, so that is a very, very manoeuvrable, hard-hitting, and very tough to shift you, and if you're careful about your placement... Demon or Vindicator. That. <laughs> yeah, but I mean even then you can tank wounds on Dante as long as he's at, at the closest because he's now Eternal Warrior. Um, so obviously if he's at the front and you've got Melter Guns and stuff coming in, he's got a 4 in run, 
and he's only going to take a single win because of the Eternal Warrior. So he is able to obviously do that. Obviously you've got mass firepower coming in, you can look out so on two up, five up. Um, and with the Librarian in there as well, if you happen to get Shield of Sanguinius, you know, even better on the rest of the squad. So you, you know, you've got five up, five up on the rest of the squad then if you're hit, getting hit with AP2. So again, that, you know, that combination is very, very powerful. You can get them hitting incredibly hard. If you've got Unleash Rage on them as well, again, that's going to do a serious amount of work. Um, so that's going to take you up to 1850. Uh, well, 1840, so you've got 10 points to play with. Now, I didn't realise this because I don't play speeders normally, but Josh does. And oh, I love speeders. Blood Angel speeders are more expensive. Yeah, ridiculously expensive to be completely honest, but the five, the, bye. The five points more and each weapon's five points more. So it's not ideal, but we've got two units of, uh, sorry, a unit of two speeders with two multi-melters. And that takes up your third fast attack. And what we've said is basically you can either deep strike them in, which can pop a tank, you've got a bigger threat range with the melter because of the multi-melters, or leave them on your deployment line out of cover, uh, sorry, in cover, out of line of sight, uh, and as soon as Dante moves forward, uh, one of your opponent's tanks is pretty much going to come for him, uh, or going to come up with, with, you know, with their payload in. Um, use Dante as the base counter punch with those two uh, land speeders with multi melters. Let's face it, four multi melters coming in. You know, you, your speeders can keep up with Dante. You've, you've then got the 12 inch melter threat range. There's no reason not to, and like Josh said, you can deep strike them in as well. Not to mention abusing vehicle squadron rules, which is 4-inch coherency, to get multiple facings on any vehicle. I'm looking slightly up with a whole lot of Imperial <laughs> Mines and thinking those shields will be invalid. Yeah, Go definitely. ahead, cover your side or your ass. Exactly, exactly. So either way, you know, vehicle squadrons, you've got, you've got that armour and you've got the cover as well, plus one for not seeing the side that you're closest to uh, and things as well. So that is the second 2,000 point list, um, and 1850, like I said, drop the speeders to 1850. We've now got a third one which we're going to go through as well. Right, so welcome back. We've now put together the third list, um, and what we've gone for here is still exactly the same core with your assault marines, your tactical marines, and your furioso, and then of course your fast tank. In this list though, you need the Vindicator as your fast tank because you need that AP2 shooting. Yes, you've yeah. got a lot of melter guns, well you've got six, um, but you need some more AP2 or anti-tank in the list. So, definitely a Vindicator because your death company that we built this list around is your horde control, so you don't necessarily need your bar predators in here. Um, so what we've done is we've built an 1850 and then the 2000 as well. So, for the 1850 what we've done is we've gone with Astaroth, he's a chaplain, he's going to wield the axe but does have instant death on a 6. Um, the reason we've gone for Astaroth over a chaplain or Lamartes though, is because he allows Death Company to reroll wounds. Why the hell not? Also, Artifice of Armour is helpful. It is. Um, it is, but there's that much AP2 around, it, you know. If you're going to be charging a horde, it's incredibly useful to have a 2-up armour at the front instead of a 3-up. Um, but yeah, the only thing is he doesn't have feel no pain though. That's the only issue, so you need to be careful about your placement of models. Um, but what we've also done, he's going to be running with 11 death company. Uh, the reason 11 is you've got 6, which are completely stock, which are basically your body bags. You know, your guard, them ones need to die first, put that, place them ones at the front they absorb the firepower first. In the middle you want kind of Astaroth kind of hanging about the middle so that he's protected and can get where he needs to be going. But you've also got three power weapons, um, which can be axes, can be swords. I mainly go for swords. Um, I've then got a single thunder hammer and a power fist and one plasma pistol in there. So basically what that's doing is it's allowing you to get those extra strength, you know, the strength nine on the charge, um, with the hammer and the fist, you've got the concussiveness of the fist, sorry, the, the hammer, hammer. Um, but then you've also got the power weapons which cuts through other marines or, or Eldar with three up armor and stuff as well. But you can also take axes if you want in there as well. You've probably got enough dice hitting and wounding from the body bag death company that you might get through some of the two up armor anyway. But this, you know, those ones are your punches in the middle, reroll, hits, and wounds. 
uh, is incredibly important. The only issue with that is, is if you come across somebody who's going to challenge Askarov. Yes. He's not great. He's only toughness four. He's not eternal warrior. Yes, he has a four bin run, an artificer armor. But as soon as you get hit with AP like a mega knob, yeah, it's going to spend at the same time. It's, it's, it's going to kill him. It's going to kill him basically. Um, yes, Astroth would take the mega knob back back out, uh, being at strength six on the charge. Uh, Orcs toughness four. There are toughness four. Uh, mega knob's toughness five, I believe. Yeah, uh, Astroth can. Uh, instant death somebody on the roll of a six, um, so it's not as reliable. But I mean, like he's going to be doubled out straight away by a mega knob, isn't he? Yeah, you throw one in, but you do you go down. So I've never run it this way, and we've literally just come up with this. I've been telling you to run it this way for <laughs> ages. Don't give me that. But um, run the Sanguinor alongside. The Sanguinor is not an independent character. He can't join the Death Company. But if you charge him in with Astaroth and the Death Company. He can accept challenges and he gets to re-roll hits and wounds in challenges. He's got to mention giving all your death company another extra attack. Exactly. Anybody within six inches gets an extra attack. So you, you uh, two close combat weapon death company, you're going to be swinging six attacks each on the charge. At initiative five, strength five, re-roll and hits and wounds. I probably shouldn't have told him really. <laughs> uh, it's the same way I give the banner to the sanguinary guard though with, with Dante an extra attack. Plus that, that quickening bubble as well. Um, but yeah, the Sanguinor is there basically to step up, take any challenges uh, that may be issued. Um, he's Eternal Warrior, he's got a 2 up, uh, two up 4. Uh, yep, yeah, 2 up 4. Up. And a Master Crafted Glaive and Carmine. Yeah. So. He also has 4 attacks base, so he'll be on so he'll be on with 5 on the charge. Yeah. So six, 5 base, six, also. 6 on the charge. Uh, 2 weapons. He doesn't have a second weapon, just has the sword. Ah. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, well. I mean, he's holding a sword in a cup. <laughs> so he's batting people around. He the should have feel no pain holding that cup as well. Um, Technically, but. Well, he might have it as part of his wallet trade. I mean, I don't know what wallet trades are doing this book. Uh, I honestly can't remember. I don't know how he's taken. Um, Fearless. Which, obviously, Death Company are anyway, so you've got that massive Fearless bubble there. The only thing you need to be careful of. Sword and Shield Lich Guard. <laughs> well, you gotta be that careful of them, I mean. You do, because. If you have that many attacks, you should kill something. Uh, go and check out the battle report I did with Eugene's Necrons. He wasn't running into Kyrian, he charged 8, Orican, and an Overlord. Okay, Orican's your problem. <laughs> you stop me there, Orican's your problem. Uh, yeah, I came off on the worst side of that. Uh, Anything will come off on the worst <laughs> side of that. You, you just simply can't shift, you know, you had a three up in Vun re-roll and once because of Orican. Yep. And then the Overlord has a, had a resurrection orb, so he was on a four or, or a five up re-rolling, I think. It's a five up res that can re-roll for one turn. Yeah. Yeah, that, that didn't go anywhere. So, Actually, no, no, it's a four up because Orican still gives that buff. It's a four up re yeah. which can be re-rolled for one turn in the game. Yeah. So the... Anyway, we're not talking about Necro and Death Stars, we're not talking about that. Basically, this unit hits like a ton of bricks. It will take almost anything else out. He's almost there with a um, little bit too much. <laughs> if you charge it at five Terminators, there's no guarantee you'd kill them. But with the sheer weight of numbers, you probably will. Yeah, you probably will, unless they're Jazz Hand <clears throat> Terminators, in which case you're probably going to die. Avoid... Probably. Avoid two up armor with them, unless you obviously unless you know that if there's two or three terminators left in a squad, by all means go for it. But avoid two up armor Death Stars. Like I would never charge this at that Mephiston Death Star at all. <laughs> I would, because you've got two models that are swinging before you. After that, you can bury the rest. Maybe we should try that out at some point. We will. Uh, so yeah, that is 1850 um, on the nose. Almost. That's not, that's the 2,000 point list. No, it isn't, because what we agreed for 2,000 points... I thought that was, that was a 2,000 point list. No, the 2,000 point list was to add in the second fast tank. But... Yes, sorry. We both agreed, although I don't have one, a you second vein decayer. Definitely. Um, <clears throat> like I said, these guys will, ch will chomp through almost anything. Anything they don't, your vindicators need to be aiming at. But you need to be aiming at everything. 
It's a vindicator. Anything with two up armor or, or, or something that's incredibly tough, um, basically go for it. Your death company is still going to make mincemeat of like turned monstrous creatures and stuff as well. Um, you know, with the power weapons and, and the strength five on the charges is, is invaluable. The initiative, you, the Hive Tyrant initiative five, I think he is. Uh, you, six, I think it was. Uh, he struck at the same time as Dante, so yeah. That was six. a swarm lord though. That was a swarm lord. So yeah, like, you know, even the, the turn of monsters, you're going to be going pretty much at the same time on the charge as well. Tervagon didn't even know what hit it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Josh splattered the Tervagon with, with a couple of Death Company. Uh, the three power sword Death Company rolled, rolled first because AP3, they just cut it down and it didn't even... Yeah. I think it would have had time to turn around. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so that is the um, third 2,000 point list. Uh, the thing with Blood Angels is you need to move fast and hit hard. Um, with Dante, you've got hit and run as well, so his entire squad, if he Does doesn't, he? yeah, Dante has hit and run. Um, so don't forget about that. Um, I want to see Josh's face. I'll be down. He has hit and run. And if one model in the squad has hit and run, the entire squad can hit and run. Uh, so don't forget about that with Dante, so you can jump around between combats if you feel that you're not winning, jump out in your opponent's assault phase, or, uh, and even charge back in to get the extra initiative and the extra furious charge. <laughs> I hate hit and run. <laughs> it's, a it's actually the bane of my life. Hit and run with spiders, reavers. Don't even talk to me about reavers. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that is basically uh, our quick overview of a few different lists to build uh, for Blood Angels. They're very, very fast. They're not quite as fast as Dark Eldar, but not far off. Uh, they can be. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the, the only thing that lacks mobility in this list really is your, your assault squads. Um, and your tactical marines, but I mean even then, they've got drop pods, they're getting where they need to go, you've got five pods in every list, you know, pick and choose who you're going to drop in. If your opponent has a lot of tanks or if they've got a knight or something that you really need to threaten, it's probably worth dropping the two assault squads and one tactical squad in. If they've got a lot of horde that you need to get rid of big things, probably the Furioso uh, and the two tacticals. But there's nothing to see, you can mix it up, drop a tactical and assault and the fury also, depending on what your opponent's got on the board, what your opponent has in reserve. Um, and the same with the fast tanks, you know, the, them three tanks are 145 each. I wonder why. <laughs> Pick and choose what you want. Um, I mean, how, how much is a, a normal Predator actually? Uh, marine Predator or standard <coughs> Predator? Uh, standard Predator for us. Uh, the 75, same as ours. So 75 um, makes it 100 with the 20 with last cannon. 140 with last cannon. Sponsons, 150 for your overcharge engines. 155, 155 with the Storm yeah. Bolt, 160 with Dozer Blade. Predators are worth looking at as well. Um, obviously, bearing in mind that they may be slightly more costly. Um, but it, it, that's the range, though. I mean, it you is. You can't mark last cannons on a Bow Pred. No, you, you definitely can't. Um, and obviously, fast. Move 6 and still fire everything. Move 12, fire. Fire the two full ballistic skill ones, and then snap shoot the twin linked one. Actually, that might arguably be better value for a boulder boat. Keep your order cannon, take your heavy boulders, take your do dozer blade and um, overdrive engines, put you at 105 points. Move 12, hose a horde. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's incredibly useful as well. I mean, the assault cannon, yes, you're getting more shots. But it's short and it's range. twin linked, but it's short range. The assault, the auto cannon. It's higher strength. Higher strength. So it's putting hurt on monsters. And it's longer range as well. Yeah. So yeah, um, obviously the Blood Angel tanks are in invaluable for around 145 points. All of them, you know, they, they've got maneuverability and they've got firepower. Keep them on the back line, grab the back line objective. You've got your assault marines and your tactical marines and fury also in your opponent's deployment zone, making a mess grabbing them objectives, you've then got your manoeuvrable squads in the middle, yes, Mephiston's in the land raider, um, but you know, you, you've still got manoeuvrability there, you've also got um, the sanguinary guard with Dante moving around all over the place, um, and you've got the death company, all with jump packs, they can, you know, quite easily hold a single flank themselves to move to the centre of the board or, or back. So yeah, Blood Angels, very manoeuvrable, very hard hitting, Get stuck in there, charge, blood for the blood god. He swears he's not scared. <laughs> so yeah, thanks very much for watching guys, and I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, me and Josh are now going to off to play a game.